All right. Well, welcome again back to our reinforced concrete design class. Um, it's been progressing very well. Uh, I see a lot of people passing down the homework. Uh, I mean, submitting the homework on time. Uh, very happy to see that. And our from the last uh, grading average is pretty good, about 90. Uh, so it seems like we're okay. I have several quick questions about the quiz. And uh, all the quizzes will be in terms of text entry. You don't have to submit your work. Uh, just type the number needed for the quiz. Uh, so this way we keep monitoring it easier. Okay. And that's for the quiz. And now about the content, I just want a quick recap before we get lost in the track. So we have studied right now the analysis of singular reinforced section. Okay. So what is singular reinforced section? Basically just the tensile reinforcement at the bottom here, right? Tensile reinforcement at the bottom. So let me share the screen. So quickly go over some of the basics that we have covered so far. Okay. Do this. <clears throat> okay. So we have covered analysis of the singular reinforced beam, right? So like I said, well, basically it's just a section with reinforcement in it, okay? The single reinforced beam. We also covered analysis of double reinforced beam, right? That means it was compressive reinforcement, compressive reinforcement. Now the difference is, difference is for single reinforced beam, <coughs> For singular reinforced beam, right? Recall what we start with. We start assuming yield, assume yield, right? And everything is given, the section is given, the reinforcement is given. So we'll proceed to find the strain in the steel, make sure it is yield, make sure it is yield, okay? Then we calculate T, which is ASFY, and then we calculate the moment, okay? ASFY, D minus half A. Okay, and in this strain process, in the strain process, we actually compute compressible C and then use beta 1C to get our A. Beta 1C to get our A, okay? So that is the process, that is the process. All right, and that's for singular reinforced section. That's for singular reinforced section. For doubly reinforced section, for doubly reinforced section, compressive reinforcement, that means compressive reinforcement that is okay things are slightly different things are slightly different the only difference right now are two two differences right one is that okay still assume you assume you <coughs> but instead of finding a tensile strain you need to find the ten compressive strain in the reinforcement first reinforcements first and make sure this is lower than the yield strength this is lower than the yield strength and then you proceed to finding the tensile strain that is bigger than the U stress, right? And with these two figured out, essentially you figure out the C and also beta 1C, which is A, okay? And you proceed to find the compression from the steel, which is AS epsilon S, right? AS FS, right? And given that FS should be Young's modulus ES modulus epsilon S, right? Okay? <coughs> Okay, and don't forget everything's prime here because it's compression, compression. Okay, and then you proceed to find concrete compression, CC, which is 0 0.85 F prime C, okay? F prime C, B, that's the width, right? And A, which is the effective compression region, minus, minus, okay? Don't forget, right? Minus what? 0 0.85 F prime C, AS prime, right? Now I can group them up in terms of 0 0.85 F prime C, okay? And this is AB minus AS prime, essentially, okay? <clears throat> so that is the compression from the concrete, compression from the concrete, all right? Now with those, with those compression tension, sorry, compression from steel, compression from concrete, you calculate for the tension where T equals ASFY. Okay, then you go iteration, trying to find out CS plus CC equal to T, so it can determine your A, determine your A, okay? And then after everything is said and done, you can come back and calculate your phi, which is strength reduction factor, and MN, which is a nominal flexure stress, right? So that is the general process. <coughs> that is the general process for single reinforced section and double reinforced section, okay? So that is the general process. 
So these are the analysis. These are analysis, meaning two things, right? Two things. What are the two things? One section is given. Section is given. That means I know the dimension of section. In other words, I know the width of the section that is determined. I know the height of the section as well. Okay, so that is given, right? Second thing is reinforcement is given as well. <coughs> reinforcement is given as well. So I know the number of bars, okay? Is it three bars, two bars? I know them, okay? And I also know the location of the bars, right? I know the location of the bars. So I know the concrete cover. So in other words, I know the depths of the beam. Okay, and I know the bars, right? I know the bars. <clears throat> and also for the compression, right? For the compression, I know them, okay? So that is the premises, well, and what we're working from, right? We know the section geometry, and we know the reinforcement geometry, right? These are premises we work on. So it's not too bad, not too bad, okay? But these are analysis, these are not design, okay? So how do we do design? And more importantly, the question is, what is design? What are we designing, right? Are we designing a section? Are we designing three bars? Both. Question, right? What we're designing? Answer is both. We need to design both, right? So in this scenario, first scenario, we're gonna talk about is design with a given section, okay? Design with given section. That means the geometry of the section is known. We simply want to find out, find out what is the rebar. We simply want to find out what is the rebar, okay? The rebar, okay? So now, for the rebar, right? Pay attention now, quiz time now. For the rebar, right? There are two kinds of information for the rebar, right? Think about what we're gonna do for the rebar, right? We're gonna put the bars in the section. We're gonna put the bars in the section, right? So there are two pieces of information very critical for us. First is the reinforcement area. First is the reinforcement area, right? So this is the critical information, <clears throat> okay? Now the other, the other information is that we have to have enough space to get the bars in, right? To get the bars in, so we have to have spacing, spacing, okay? We have to have spacing or so-called detailing. Now my question is, my question is, which one is more important, right? Which one need to be decided first, okay? My first, first favorite candidate, Wade, Wade, Mr. Compton, are you there? Yes, sir, yeah. Hey, hey, how are you doing, man? Doing good. Okay, good. So quick question here, right? So two parameters I need to decide when I design a reinforced section. Now the reinforcement area and the spacing of the bars. So which one should I decide first? The area or the spacing? Uh, I would think you would need the area first because that's how you figure out the spacing. That's correct, right? So always find out area first, right? So while I'm having you here, wait, to find the area, okay? Another question. What do I need to find the area? What do I need to find the area? In other words, what does this area determine? It determines the tension of the steel or the compression of the concrete, which one? Uh, tension of the steel. So it determines the tension of the steel, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Right. So how do I link the tension to the compression? I let the tension equal to compression, isn't it? Yeah. So what is the compression of the concrete? Do you still remember the equation on top of your head? Um. Give you a head start. 0 0.85 F prime C fill in the blank, what are the remaining part? I mean, remember the Winnie stress block? This is 0 0.85 FMC. <coughs> I'll give you another freebie. The width of the section, I have one parameter or two parameter left. Can you think of it? What would be the height uh, of this? Yes? Uh, I don't remember, to be I honest with you. 
<laughs> okay, so let me give another hint. This is the effective compressive zone. Effective compressive zone. So quick question, is it A or C? A or C, wait. Uh, C. C? Nah, wrong answer, okay. <laughs> it's A, right? That is A. You can write in terms of C, but with a beta one, okay? Or A, okay? Got it, wait. Yeah. All right, okay. So that's what we need, right? So essentially from there, we can let C equal to compression of the concrete. So set up equation ASFY have to be equal to 0 0.85 F prime C, B, A. I'm just gonna use A to simplify. So essentially, I need the reinforcement area in terms of the 0 0.85 F prime C, B, A divided by Y. Okay, divided by Y. Okay, so that is the reinforcement area I needed. So the total required reinforcement area gotta be bigger or equal than this number here. So that is the design philosophy. That is the design philosophy, how we determine it, how we determine it. So you say, Bob, this is not too hard, is it? Uh, so I just throw in the dimensions and get my reinforcement area, right? What could be hard, right, of this part? It's not too hard. So let's take a look, let's take a look. Okay, so now let's take a look at the first lecture on the design part. First lecture on the design part. Okay, I'm gonna start from a new page. I'll continue maybe. Okay, save some space. So, <clears throat> lecture six today design, design of a singular reinforced, design of singular reinforced section. Okay. Okay, so objective is, objective is only one objective, right? So, know how to design, no how to design <coughs> AS, okay, steel, right, area was given, given section, okay, section geometry is given, section geometry is given, okay, so that is our topic today, that is our topic today. So before we get started though, I need to get some geometry settled, right, I need to get some geometry settled. First of all, 6.1 is the effective depth, effective depth. Now, before I have rebar in the section, I don't know where the bar is going to locate at. I don't, I have no idea, right? So I have to estimate to begin with, because without it, I cannot calculate the compressed zone, right? So typically for one layer, typically for one layer of steel, one layer of steel, okay, the depth is roughly equal to H minus 2.5 inch, the height minus 2.5 inch, okay? Now for two layers, for two layers, two layers still, okay? The depths have to roughly equal to H minus 3.5 inch, okay? Naturally, because it's higher, right? So think about in your head, for one layer, for one layer, this is about 2.5 a concrete cover. For three, for two layers, for two layers, okay, I'm just gonna run them put here, and this is about 3.5, okay? So that is the estimated depth of the beam. So without anything to go on, I'm just gonna estimate the depth of the beam from here, okay? So that's the first thing we have to estimate. The second thing is that I don't know how much area that you come up with at the end, I don't. But every time when I finish calculation, I need to make sure that the provided reinforcement area has to be bigger than this minimum requirement from ACI, okay? minimum requirement from ACI. So this minimum requirement, okay, has to be larger of the two. Larger of the two, which part? So first is three square root F prime C, okay, FY divided by FY and BW, BW, which is the web, we, we talk about it, okay? Must by the D, which is depth, okay? Now the equation is 200 BWD divided by FY. So, you see this interesting parameter here, BW, what does it mean, right? Where is this W, the subscript coming from, right? So this simply means web. Why is that is for a rectangular section, this width BW is the width of the section. But for T section like this, okay, we call the top as a flange, we call, top, we call the bottom here as a web, so the BW is this 
color right here, okay, is the width of the web, thinnest the section, thinnest part of the section, thinnest part of the section, okay? So that's why we use BW here, okay? And on top of this, this F prime C here, inside, always use a unit as PSI, okay? If you use KSI, you're gonna mess up your unit, okay? Has to be in PSI, have to be in PSI, right? So that is the minimum reinforcement area. So after everything's said and done, you got a provided steel. Provided steel reinforcement has to be always bigger or equal than the minimum requirement. Minimum requirement, okay? So that's the minimum reinforcement. And then another thing, right? I need to know the design procedure. I need to know the design procedure, right? So let's take a look. So design procedure, right? Design procedure. So think about it. All we are trying to do here is to ensure VMN, okay? VMN is the reduced or reduced design moment, right? Sorry, reduced, yeah, reduced design moment, right? Has to be bigger or equal than MU, which is apply, okay? And recall, recall the MU equal to 1.2 M dead load plus 1.6 line load, factor, factor at the moment, all right? And then MN equal to if yield, if the steel yielded ASFY, D minus halfway. Okay, so this is essentially the design requirement and that yields us an equation for the reinforcement area. So that is AS bigger than MU divided by MU divided by VFY, Fy d minus half a. It's slightly different from the equation mentioned earlier, but essentially the same, right? You start from the factor moment mu, start from factor moment mu, and estimate the reinforcement area like this, okay? So quick question here, all right? Quick question here. I know the section now, all right? I know the section, okay? And I can estimate the depth of the section, okay? And that means in this equation here, I'm gonna use a red mark. In this equation here, I know the apply moment. I know what moment capacity I need, essentially, okay? And I know Fy, right, the yield strength, okay? And for the fee strength reduction factor, uh, you know, I can, for fee strength reduction factor, I can estimate, okay? So I can put 0.9 to start with, put 0.9 to start with, fine. Just gonna assume, okay? But for D, which is depth, right? I can use H minus 2.5 or H minus 3.5, depending on how many layers of steel I estimate I can put in, right? That's fine. So the remaining question is, do I know or can I estimate, can I estimate the compressive zone A here? Okay, can I estimate the compressive zone here? Okay, so I'm calling my next victim. Justin, Justin, yes. hey, are you there? Yep. Good, good. Okay, so quick question here. So I want to estimate how much steel I have. I get everything else I can estimate. Can I put a number as a compression zone there to start with? Can I put uh, something there um, to start with? You, I, I'd say you can, but you'd have to go through that iter, iterative process that we talked That's about. Right. That's right. So we have to go through the iteration, right? We have to go through the iteration. That's a great answer. Thank you. So. The answer is right. We can put some number to it, but we have to go through some iteration. So matter of fact, ACI says, you know what? I'm gonna simplify the process. I'm going to use an estimated, an estimated, okay? Estimated distance, okay? Distance to replace, to replace this D minus half A distance, to replace this D minus half A distance. And what is this physical meaning, right? What is the physical meaning of this parameter JD here, right? So you think of it, it's simply the distance between the compression of the concrete and the tension of the steel. So this is the lever arm. This is the lever arm. And ACI says, and it just tells you now, oh, without knowing anything, I can approximate that equal to 0.9% or 90% 0.9 of the depth D. Okay, so this is approximate. So this is approximate. Okay, so now you can see the whole thing goes this, the whole thing goes like this. 
So I'm gonna estimate. So if I have a procedure list out, I'm gonna estimate. So estimate, okay, JD, okay? Bring in to get AS, which is the area of steel, okay? And then check the strain in the steel, right? Epsilon T, right? And also check the compressive zone A, okay? And reiterate, right? Trying to find out S again trying to find X again. Okay, so that is the process. You assumed a distance between the compression and the tension. You proceed to get a your steel, and you got some number for the steel, but you had to provide the bars. You provide the steel in the terms actual bars, get the actual reinforcement area, and go on, get the strain, basically the strength reduction factor and the whole nine yard, and finish that and get A, which is effective depth, come back. Okay, come back to see if you're still is that adequate or not, is adequate or not. Okay, so that is the design flow chart. Okay, so it's very straightforward. So I'm just gonna show you in terms of example here. Show you in terms of example here, okay? So 6.4, an example. So, so let's take a look, take a look. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so first example, I have a simply supported beam, simply supported beam. And the beam is subjected to a distributed loaded, distributed loading. Okay. Let's just say I don't know what it is, but it's a distributed loading. All right. So once I have a moment diagram drawn, I have a moment diagram drawn to save you the hustle, because I save you the trouble. And I have a moment diagram drawn. And I know at the maximum moments right in the middle span. Okay, right in the middle span. And I say this MU, I even calculate, factored out everything for you. And that is 145 cubic feet, cubic feet, okay? And I need to design a section. I need to design a section, but all I'm given, all I was given is a section look like this, okay? I'm given the section geometry like this and the width is 12 inches, the height is 24 inches, okay? And I tell you that use concrete of 4,000 PSI, Okay, grade 60, all right? And then the question is, how many bars, what size of bars, two or three, we need, okay? So that is the design problem, right? That is the design problem. So first thing first, we need to estimate steel, okay? So to solve this problem, to solve this problem, let's estimate the steel, right? So I'm gonna use the equation right here. I'm gonna use the equation right here. So AS, right, first step. AS has to be bigger or equal than MU applied factor moment divided by phi Fy, and this is D minus half A, but like I said, approximately equal to MU divided by phi Fy JD. Phi Fy JD. And knowing that, you don't have to write down every time, but knowing that JD equal to 0.9 depths, and the D equal to the height minus Height minus. And Jacob, Mr. Clements, Jacob. Can you hear me? Hey, yes, yes, I can hear you. Great. So, quick question can you help me out? So, should I select 2.5 or should I select 3.5? Uh, so, you really, really don't know, kind of confused. That's right. Okay. You. <laughs> okay, no worries. So, what is the difference between 2.5 and 3.5? Well, I guess, um, I mean, you mean like the numerical value or, I guess, you know, one's <clears throat> got a, the 3.5 inch would have the larger area. So two layers, so two, two layers. layers, right, right. And 2.5 lower number means one layer, isn't it? Yep. One layer. Right, so without knowing anything, where should we start? One layer or two layer? Uh, I don't know. You don't know, right? Me neither, right? So every time when you don't know, start with one layer. Okay, start with one layer, because you can always add two layers, right? But if you start with All two right. layers, realize that you have too much of a concrete cover, you gotta go back again. So you have a high risk of repeating yourself, right? Okay. 
Okay, all right, good guess, okay? So we always start with one layer, start with one layer, okay? Start with one layer. Good, okay, so that is the starting point of this whole thing, okay? So just carry on with the equation, not much to discuss, but just follow the process AS equal to MU, and now MU is this number here, so 145 on the top, okay? And this is K feet, kips of feet, okay? I wanna convert everything, I wanna convert everything in terms of PSI, or pound inch. So multiply 12 inch per foot, okay? 12 inch per foot, multiply thousand, multiply thousand, okay? That is, thousand means, let's down this way, it's better. Thousand pound uh, per kips. Okay, so divide by bottom here fee. Okay, first thing is fee. Always assume 0 0.9 to start with. Always assume 0 0.9 to start with. So 0.9. Okay, and Fy is grade 60. It, where is it? Okay, I said it. Grade 60 here. So the 60 multiplied by thousand psi. Okay, and then this fellow here, remember, replace with this fellow here, remember, 0.9D here, and D is this fellow right here, okay? So with that, I'm just gonna say 0.9D, so D is what, H is 24 inch minus 2.5 inch, okay? And to save you the trouble, this is actually 21.5 inch for the depths, for the depths, for the beam, for the depths of the beam. Okay, so now AS, carry on the calculation. I just did it quickly yesterday. So it's 1.67 inch squared, inch squared, okay? So it turns out I only need 1.67 inch squared of steel, inch squared of steel, okay? So at this step, at this step, you know, I don't know the steel yet. So I just know this is required area. So let me go on and iterate to find basically to find the compressive zone A, to find compressive zone A. So A, okay, A equal to ASFY, this is back to the analysis, ASFY, 0 0.85 F prime C B, right from our previous analysis equation, okay? So on the top, it is 1.67 inch square, just calculate it out, and then 60 KSI, yield strength of the bar, divided by 0 0.85, okay? And this is four KSI. Here I'm using KSI just to save me a little bit of time. And there's a 12 inch, which is the width B here, okay? And you run through the calculation, turn out A is actually equal to 2.46 inch, 2.46 inch, okay? So that's the actual compressive zone, actual compressive zone, okay? So once I know A, I know the compressive zone, I don't have to use JD anymore, okay? So I'm gonna go back and check my AS again. Check my AS again, okay? So now I have to ensure plugging this equation right here, plus this equation right here, AS has to be bigger and equal than MU divided by phi FY D minus half A because I now, I have A, I have A, right? So on the top is 145 kip foot, okay? And then multiply 12 inch per foot as before and divide by a B, again 0 0.9 to start with and 60 KSI, okay? And D here, 21.5 inch minus half A, half A is 1.26 inch, okay? That's half A and I got A, now is 1.59 inch, which inch squared, okay? Which smaller, smaller than the previous 1.67 inch, okay? So that or this is the iteration we need to get the actual reinforcement error, to get actual reinforcement error, okay? So that means I need this amount of bars give me 1.59 inch squared of area, 1.59 inch squared area. So Next step is, I know this is a requirement, fine. So I need to select bars. I need to select bars, okay? So 
here. Let me try my next victim here. Who's down here? Dalton. Dalton. Mr. Brown. Hey, did you fix your? Oh, did I lose him again? Oh, you're here, Dalton. Are you there? Can you hear me? All right, I still have trouble. Okay, that's fine. We we'll talk next time, right, Dalton? Okay. So, Stephen. Stephen. Yep. Hey, how are you, buddy? Doing well. How about yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. So, here, a quick question. I have a total required steel, okay, required area of steel of 1.59 inch squared. I have following suggestion, right, in terms of bars, okay? I just want to get a estimate number of bars for us. So I can use either number nine bar, okay? And given that each bar, right, each bar will give me the area of one inch squared. Or I can use number eight bars. Each bar gave me a 0.79 inch squared, okay? So how many bars you want to use, Steve? Which one we want to go? Uh, would you go with the two number eight bars? Two number nine, is that right? Uh, two number eight was what I said. Oh, two number eight, I'm sorry. Okay, there's something wrong with my microphone. Let me discuss. Can you guys still hear me? Yep. Okay, good. So you said two number eight, right? Yep. So how much of steel I have if I go with two number eight? So AS provide the two number eight, so two must by 0.79 inch square, how much I get? Can you do a quick calculation for me? Yeah, let me pull out my calculator. Uh, 1.58. 1.58, is it bigger than 1.59 required? Nope. Okay, so it wouldn't work, isn't it? Right. So then would you have to do three then? Well, three number eight bars, right? Or so would you just do two number nine bars? So two number nine bars, right? Yep. Okay, so scratch that, right? So two number nine bars, let's try that. So AS provide, of course, we want it to be as close as possible because, you know, we don't want to waste our bars, right? So two number yeah. So that gives me a two inch square, right? Which is bigger than 1.59 inch square. Isn't that? Okay. Yep. okay. Good deal. Thanks, Steve. So let's go with it. Okay, let's go with it. Sounds pretty good to me. Okay. So we're just gonna have two number nine bars, right? Two number nine bars. So start from the calculation. How am I gonna determine the moment capacity, right? So after selecting that bars, which is two number nine, okay, I want to proceed to get my moments. So phi and mn okay phi and mn so first recalculate the actual compression zone why because now the problem has turned into a known section the problem has turned into a known section with known rebar configurations now isn't it so i have two number nine bars at the bottom and concrete covers 2.5 as before as assumed before okay so that is the section that is a section right so to number nine so my job now is just to find out the moment capacity of this given section okay so how to do that right how to do that so a you need to find compressor zone a equal to asfy asfy divided by 0 0.5 a5 f prime cb 0 0.85 f prime cb so two number Two number nine bar, two inch squared, multiplied by 60 KSI EU strength, divided by 0 0.85, multiplied by four KSI concrete, okay? And the width is B, 12 inch, okay? So I gotta know, I gotta now, the new compressor zone is 2.94 inch, okay? This value, you see, this value is slightly lower than the original value just because I provided much steel. I provided more steel than required. A little bit more steel than required. It doesn't matter, okay, close. So I'm gonna use my A to find my actual compression zone. C equals A divided by beta one. And that is 2.94 inch divided by 0 
and I get this 3.46 inch of the actual compression zone, actual compression zone. So I know the strain in the bottom layer, which is only one layer for now, is D minus C divided by C multiplied by epsilon Cu. Epsilon Cu, okay? So proceed, I got 21.5 as the D minus C, which is 3.46, divided by C, which is 3.46, okay? And multiplied by 0 0.003, right? That's the concrete compressive strain. So I have a number of epsilon t equal to 0 0.0156, okay? 0.0156. So this is larger than 0 0.005, okay? Hence, tension control. Tension control. Recall, you forgot already, recall. I need to find a phi, so this is epsilon t. I have a 0 0.002, 0. 005. So if it's bigger than 0 0.05, I have my phi equal to some value lower than 0.2, the yield strain, I have another value. In between, I have a linear interpolation. And I define this zone called tension control. Okay, and this is a transition. Okay, this is compression control. Now we used under reinforced, over reinforced, but essentially they're the same thing. Okay, three regions. Okay, so quick question here. Quick question here. Okay, quick question here. Adam. Adam. Yes. Hey. So I have a epsilon t bigger than zero point zero zero five. What would be my c value right here? Uh, point nine. Point nine. Right. Right. Yep. Very straight. Yes. 0.9, okay? So I know my phi is 0.9, I'm happy, right? Phi is 0.9 because that's what I assumed to begin with, right? So I'm happy with that. I move on to my moment capacity mn equal to t, which is asfy, d minus half a, d minus half a. So 120 kips total tension now, 21.5 inch minus a is 2.94. Where are the 2.94 coming from, right? The latest, the nearest answer right here, right? right here, isn't it? Not the previous value, but the current, okay? Don't confuse yourself. Divided by two, divided by two, and I got mn equal to, mn equal to 200.3 kip foot, okay? So, Brad, 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 are you there? Uh, yes. Okay, so quick question, sir. Do you think our design is adequate? I got my nominal moment strength, sorry. Mn equal to 200.3 kip fit. Do you think our current design is adequate? Um, yeah, I would think so. How, how do you know that? Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, we'll give you the thinking that you think is adequate. Um, what are we comparing it to? Right, good answer. So what are we comparing to, right? What are we comparing to? That's my question here. What are we comparing to? We'll go back to the problem. What are we comparing to? Um, the 145 kit foot possibly. Right, exactly, that's what we're comparing to. But which one, which number should I use MN? Should I use that compared to MU? Um, yes. Ah, uh, wrong answer. Think again. MU. Think again. So we have, go back to the design, right? Go back to the design requirement, right? We talked about here, right? It is, this part right here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So remember, use your stress reduction factor. Use your stress reduction factor. So it's actually phi mn compared to mu. Got it, Brett? Yeah. Okay, so phi mn, now we just calculate phi, which is 0.9, and mn is 200.3 kip foot. I got about 180 kip foot, give or take. So this is bigger than mu, which is 145. And then, oh, 
under 45. And then I will say, okay, design is adequate. Okay. So that is our final design. So essentially once everything's said and done, I'm gonna draw the section up just for my own purpose, in a design office, when everything is said and done, I always like to do that, to keep and remind myself what kind of section need, what kind of bars, and what kind of capacity I have. After doing it so long, I can remember everything, right? It become a, become a memory, muscle memory, right? So this is AS, could be two inch square. So two number, yeah. so two number nine bars. Now that is my design. That is my design and I want to label here FMN equal to 180 feet, okay? So just for my own information, I always put a bracket behind so 145 to keep him myself in check. So this is my final design. Okay, now since I have two bars, since I have two bars, okay, and we should check our minimum beam width requirement to see if I can fit in, right? If I fit it, if it can fit in, right? So I only have two bars, right? It's not too bad. Naturally, I have 12 inch, 12 inch. I'm pretty sure I can fit in. I'm pretty sure I can fit in because three, recall from last lecture, recall three number nine bars, three number nine bars give you a beam, minimum beam width about 10 inches about 10 inches. So this is 12. I have two number nine bars. I can fit in no problem. Okay. So that is the design process. That is the design process. Okay. So first example, before I let you go, I want to start the next example. So we'll carry on the next lecture. Okay. But here, so that is simply supported case, simply supported case. So now let's take a look at example number two here. Okay. Example number two here. So I have a cantilever beam. Instead of simply support, I have a cantilever beam, okay? And I have a point low at the end, and I say live low equal to five kips, okay? Live low equal to five kips. And the beam, and the beam has a length of 20 feet, okay? Beam has a length of 20 feet, all right? So quiz, this is our quiz, okay? Quiz number three, quiz number three, okay? Now, this is can deliver beam, can deliver beam. I have two rebar configurations to choose, right? First rebar configuration, let me give you the core section first. This is the core section that I call it A, choice A. I have my bars, tension bar, only tension, single reinforced case, no compressive reinforcement, okay? So tension reinforcement, put at bottom. And then I put the bars also at the top. So for this case scenario, okay? Can deliver B, okay? Which configuration should I choose? Is it A or B? Okay, Mike, Michael. Yeah. Hey, Mr. McKernan. So quick question here. Do we choose A or B? Um, I wanna say B only because since it's a cantilever beam, the tension in the beam is gonna be on the top side of the beam. So you're gonna want the bars on the top to offset the tension. Exactly. Good answer. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay, so this is the right answer, okay? Because I have a negative bending. Okay, so I'm going to choose B. Okay, so you say, all right, Bob, you know, we got an answer from Mike. What do you need me to do for the quiz three? So for quiz three, okay, for quiz three, this is for you to finish by next lecture, okay? Very quick, by next lecture, okay? I want us to do this. I know the beam will have self-weight. I know the beam will have self-weight, okay? And knowing that the concrete has 150 pounds per cubic foot, um, per cubic foot, okay? I want us to get a linear dead load, okay? Linear dead load using the method we talked about before, omega D here, okay? I want us to convert Omega D here. So question is, let me use that color. What is dead load? Okay, in terms of linear lens. In terms of linear lens. Okay. So this is the quiz. Okay. So 
If you have any questions, welcome to stay behind. If not, fill in this quiz, I'll upload right now, and we'll see you on Wednesday, okay? We'll see you on Wednesday, all right? Okay, any questions, guys, from homework, from anything else, welcome to talk to me, okay?